Hello! Hello, ladies, gentlemen, distinguished individuals. Uh, we're back with Spyro Enter the Dragonfly, which is a bit infamous among the uh, Spyro the Dragon community and probably the general PlayStation community, although I definitely can't say for certain one way or another there. <laughs> and coincidentally, kind of ironic that we're choosing to do this let's play right now because of the recent news oh yeah spyro it reignited an hd trilogy remake oh man i am so excited they could have they, they should have included this in there too uh, i don't know and added all the intended levels well and see there's there's the tricky part that's the tricky part because you don't know most of the people who worked on this have probably retired by this point or are working on something else already. It's just a float, you scaredy cat. Ah, good old Tom you Kenny. You sure do look happy, don't they, Spyro? Well, it's not every day that a dragon gets his dragonfly. And, like... <clears throat> So, to be fair to this game, this is very much in the spirit of the first three games in the trilogy, I think. So, we meet again, little dragon. I'm back, and I'm stronger than ever! Who are you calling and they at least, Shorty? Nobody invited you! They, they at least have the, the voice cast. Very clever, dragon. You know, you uh, should join me. We would make a great team. What do you want this time, Ripto? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do we want this time, boss? You're not hired for your brains, you dinosaurian land mass. Keep thinking oh, and though, I, send you I do have to wonder how Ripto is back. Unemployed in Molten Crater, begging for work from Nasty References Thor. Spiral 3. Now, back to what I was saying. <laughs> What do I want this time? I'm glad that you asked, Purple Pest, and I will be happy to demonstrate. Since I've had enough to do with dragons, I thought, perhaps, dragonfly. Okay then. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen, but you it happens see, to everyone, right though. Dragonflies, the dragons are nothing. Soon the dragon homeland will be mine. <laughs> like, <sighs> and they just let him leave. The lizard totally stole all the dragonflies. Even Sparks is gone. Spyro, come to me. Don't worry. I think I know where to start. Follow me. Okay. Okay, so while this is loading, let me read you the development section of the Spyro Wikia for this game. Go right ahead. The game was originally going to be about Nasty Nork teaming up with Ripto in an attempt to capture all of the dragonflies Sparks. for themselves. I thought I lost you, pal. <clears throat> That was close, Sparks. <laughs> Listen, I think I may have figured out a way to catch those dragonflies. Spyro, stand back. So, no explanation as to how Sparks is just there. Whoa! What'd you do that for? Drat, that didn't exactly work right. I'm still learning, you know, Spyro. The good news is, I've created a powerful magic that will enable you to use different breath abilities. The bad news is, you're gonna have to find dragon runes to use them, since the spell scattered them in different parts of the dragon realms. Cool! Come on, Sparks! Let's get going! We've got a lot of work ahead of us if we want to find those dragonflies. Do you think we'll ever get a day off? Thanks. Okay. Oi. Okay. okay, I have issues with that. So, the game was originally going to be about Nasty Nork teaming up with Ripto in an attempt to capture all of the dragonflies for themselves. It was supposed to contain 120 dragonflies to collect, over 25 levels, a frame rate of 60 frames per second, and relatively fast loading times. However, 
Universal Interactive Studios forced the developers to rush on developing the game in order to be available by winter 2002, and therefore it suffers from incon an inconsistent frame rate, long loading times, graphical glitches, sound issues, and lockups. Additionally, Nasty doesn't appear anywhere in the game at all, although he is mentioned by Ripto. There are only 9 levels for the player to explore, and only 90 dragonflies for the player to collect. Well, there you have it. Also, the popular characters Moneybags and Bianca appear just once each in the whole game. Bianca at the very beginning, where she mysteriously disappears afterwards and does not return until the player finishes the game, and Moneybags in a Dragonfly Dojo level, where he charges spiral gems for his assistance, and those gems you don't even get back. Well, there we go then. That's, uh, that's the summary of effectively how Universal screwed this particular uh, game. On the bright note, Stuart Copeland from the first who did the music for the first three games also does the music here. Or did the music here. Dragon magic with my magic and grant you bubble breath to catch dragonflies. They're shy and will probably run away from He makes such a good music for the games. Right. And and I think we mentioned it before, he during uh his nostalgia trip was the first sparrow. Stuart Copeland also worked on the Amanda show. Between fire and bubble breath. Yeah. You mention that every single time we talk about the guy, so yeah. What most people would know him from is the police. He, he wasn't. That was his band before we started working on Spiral, right? Uh, he was the drummer, uh, working alongside uh, the famed Sting. I wrote the magic of this sacred room will bestow upon you the power of bubble. And you know, now, now that I'm 26 and older, we're never even really given an explanation about how the spirit dragon even supposed to... Yeah, no, we're not given any explanation. He's just suddenly there and we walk up the, the thing to him. Yep, and that whole thing about Bianca scattering the runes with her magic, like... Okay, apparently that's a thing. Okay, so, there are a total of 7,000 gems, 90 dragonflies. For Dragon Realms, there are 800 gems and 10 dragonflies, yeah. I, I think everybody can, can read that, and if they really want to, they can just pause the video there. Each thing has, each level has 10 dragonflies. The gems vary a little bit, but it's not as variable as it was, like, the first three games. Yeah. Oh, God. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Did we really, really need a, a, a text box break for that? And for this, oh god. You know, I, I keep thinking, we've come so far since Navi, and then I remember, oh yeah, this was the age of, oh god, there's a tutorial box that stops the game for everything. I know, I know that they, they did the same thing with Spyro 2 and 3, I just I can't remember how they did it. They at least integrated it into a single, like, straight tutorial. And they talked you... about more than one subject per box, so, so rather than having to halt the gameplay. So a one-time explanation. Yes. Like, Oops, that's not what I okay, so I understand those are probably there for the younger players. However, I would say you're gonna want, if you're gonna be trying to help out the younger players, you're probably gonna want to put the the audio that goes along with those words in English, not made up dragonfly ease. Oh God! Look, I love the Spyro games, and this game does have some redeeming aspects, but it really does not get off to a good start. What's worse, tutorials wise, this or um, a hero's tale? 
So you know, where exactly do I, find I spots? don't, I can't say, honestly. Uh, it's been long enough since Hero's Tale. Well, I think, I and, like, we haven't finished playing through this. If I remember correctly, that one was, wasn't, wasn't, I mean, it wasn't none of the reason, but it wasn't, wasn't so much about the tutorials as it was, like, I think you said they didn't need to give you a tutorial on stepping on switches. Like, you could figure that out yeah. on your own. Like, the, and, again, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here on this one because, like, I've talked about good game design before, and we've, generally speaking, moved past this point in design. This game is 15 goddamn years old. Um, hey, but... Spyro. You know, if you press the, the X button to jump, then press the X button again in midair, you can glide. Try using your glide to follow me. This isn't so bad, it's kind of from an end of the old ones. Well, right. In the old ones, they were at least, like... They didn't give you a tutorial on, oh yeah, here's why you pick up the shiny things. Did you try getting the shiny things? Hey, maybe you should use one of your attacks on this thing so you can get more shiny things. Part of Way to go, a game's experience is letting a player figure things out the as they go. There, that's like... Get there by hovering. To hover, press that's the that's part of the joy of the game. Of your glide. And a, a properly designed game will... With, with the right design, the game will um, will let you figure things out as you go, and you'll just intuitively pick things up. Sort of like... That sounds easy enough, but what's the challenge? What do I have to do? <sighs> well, like, okay, let's say in the original Spyro, even if you missed the dragon that tells you that the orc, the norks with metal shields can't be flamed, like, you'd still probably figure that out after attempting it. So that, that's one of those kind of stupid hints? It's, it's one of those things that you should... That, a designer should let the player figure out as they okay. as they play. That dragonfly is as good as free. You shouldn't have to tell the player, "Hey, do this." A except for like the very basics. Nice work, Spyro. And, and check this I'm out. speaking in a general I sense. A dragonfly. Here, why don't you take it? <laughs> hey, it's Bubbles. From the Powerpuff Girls. Yes, clearly. Um, and like, I, I really do see what they were going for with this one. Like, they were... They, they really were just going for, like, a, a an update, a PS2 version of what we've had before with the previous games. A crasher of Apple Cortex, except that was done better. Uh, debatable, but. At least sure. it didn't have like, graphical glitches and the frame rate issues. The loading times alone. Those were bad, but like the graphical, the glitches were pretty minor and they didn't have any slowdown and. Yeah. I don't know. Darn it. We're getting away from the point here. What I'm saying is, you shouldn't... If you've done the design for your game right, you won't need to do a tutorial for everything. You should only need to explain some of the basic functions. And this was produced in an era where we still have where we still had the, the manuals in the games. Well, yeah, I, I, one thing I noticed when I got my Kingdom Hearts 3 HD remix is for the PS3, no game books. Yeah, they've stopped doing that, which kind of makes sense to me. 
it's less stuff they have to work on and it, I mean it does help reduce the waste a little bit There we go. Oh, that was close. Okay, yes, thank you, Sparks. We could have figured that out on our own. Hey, it's Jake. Oh, boy. Oh, and we can't get everything in the home world right away. We have to go. Right. Like, I, I don't expect us to get everything all at once. Well, I mean, because we have, to, we have to unlock certain gates of certain breaths, and we don't have those breaths yet. Right. This is where they started doing the whole elemental breath change-up thing with Spyro, which I can kind of understand why you wanted to do that. But at the same time, it wasn't... I wouldn't have called it strictly necessary. Oh, wow. A big lock. I wonder what we need. <laughs> yeah, it's a giant lock with a lightning bolt on it. Part of what annoys me about the constant tutorial stuff, it's not just the the, the breaking the pace of the game. It also, it also makes some very, I would say, insulting assumptions about the attention span and or um, intelligence of the people playing the game. Now, I understand we've always got, you know, new players coming in of varying ages and ability. But you shouldn't have to... A game should still have a, a flow to it that this does not. Good work, Spyro. Use the stones to get to the dojo. Remember, Spyro, find the dragonflies before Ripto. We're 30 seconds in. I don't think we needed reminding. Also, why the fuck aren't you helping out? Okay. I think that's enough salt for now. I'm, I'm actually... I do want to talk about, like, the, some of the good features of this game. Like, you can tell from the animation... Like, you, you, it's obvious that they were rushed. And the animations don't look as good, even as the ones on the PS1 did. Oh god, I knew it. Um, keeping positive, keeping positive. <clears throat> if... <sighs> if they'd had more time, like, it's clear, these would have looked... Just basically like the classic PS1 animations, only better. Which is totally great. Like, it's very much in keeping with the spirit of the series. And the exploration for all of the cramming they had to do, it's still there. Like, it still has, it still feels, it still feels like you're exploring a world. And, like, I mean, they got Tom Kenny, so it's not like I can diss the voice acting too much. At least anything that isn't... At least, you know, for Spyro himself. You can't always help the script you're given. Especially in the video game industry. Spyro, I was dreaming of a genie that turned into a nightmare when these horrible Riptox kicked me out of my bed and threw me down this swirly thingy. Maybe the magic of dragonflies will help activate it. Uh, 25 dragonflies. Woo! And we're 
we're already at three, I think. Yep. And they kept the classic sound effects. That's nice. Like, you can make the argument that they just kind of stuck them there because they didn't have anything else to use, but 